I made all of these shapes in Inkscape in about 25 seconds. It's super easy. Let me show you how. If you've never used Inkscape before, I highly recommend it. It's a completely free program and it's got menus along the left side, the top, the right side, and then even on the bottom, there's a color palette that runs and you can get this for free. So in this tutorial here, I'm just gonna show you really quickly how to create shapes. So on the left-hand side, there's little shape buttons. There's rectangles and squares, there's circles and ellipses, and then there's stars and then polygons, which is really just like shapes with more than say five sides. So I'm going to click on the square one just to start. And then from here, it's just a simple matter of just dragging your mouse and just creating a rectangle. Now you can change the color of this using that color palette down below. So I can just click red, for example, and that'll make it red. Or I can click it green and that'll make it green. Super easy to do. From there, I can now stretch it. I can change it. I can also just move it around. It's actually really quite straightforward. If you want to create a square, a true square where the sides are equal, then you just click the little rectangles button again and just hold down the control key and then just kind of drag it on a 45 degree angle. Now I do want to warn you, if you really pull it to the right or if you really pull it down, then it will go outside of the square. But for the most part, if you just stick to a 45 degree angle, you can get a square and again, if you want to change the color, you would just click the color palette down below and you can change the color. I do want to point out as well with colors that there's this thing called stroke down at the very bottom and it is the outside of the shape. So there's a fill down on the lower left and then there's a stroke. Now the stroke here says white, but I'm going to click on it and it's going to open up actually a stroke palette over on the right hand side and I can change that stroke color if I wanted. So I could make it, for example, red. You can see now there's starting to be a little bit of a red around the outside. Now it could be a little tricky if you want to change the stroke width. So let's say I wanted to have a really big red outline on this box rather than fiddling around the second layer and trying to put a rectangle or a square in behind. I can just simply change the stroke on this blue square to make it really thick. So what I'm going to do is at the very top of this palette, and again, to get to this palette, I just click the stroke button on the lower left, and that'll pop up this stroke palette here. At the very top, there's a fill button, and you'll see the fill button is now changed to blue because that's what's inside the actual square. I could change that if I wanted to, by the way. See how this the square now updates? But I want to go over here to stroke paint. That's my stroke color, which is now red. So see the difference there, blue, red. And then when I go to stroke style, that is the width of the stroke. And as I increase this, you can see the stroke now starting to get bigger around this. So I can change the actual color of it. And I can also change the width of it as well, which is kind of nice. So you can create all sorts of funky shapes there with squares and rectangles. To create a circle is pretty much the exact same thing. Right underneath the squares button, there's a little circle button. When I click on that, there's an opportunity now to make an oval, a circle, that sort of thing. So you can make an oval, for example. Now it's kept the parameters from the last shape that I drew. So if you didn't want this, let's pretend I wanted a green circle with no stroke. Then what I would do is go over here to fill. I would change it to the color that I want. So I can move this around to point to green, for example. Let's say I want to have it green. And then underneath stroke style, or sorry, stroke paint, I can just remove the stroke. So I just click no and it just removes it. So stroke paint is nothing, or you can even have a flat color. You can even have gradient colors. See that? That's pretty cool too, right? So if you wanted to have a gradient color, you can then just make that larger. So you can create some pretty funky effects pretty easily using just the stroke and the fill. I'm going to just remove the stroke in that point there. So now I've just got just a regular shape. Now, if I wanted to create a true circle, then I'll click on the circle button and I'll hold down the control key. And again, I'll just go on a 45 degree angle. If I really rip it, it'll kind of elongate, but otherwise it'll try to like default back into a circle. So that's like a true circle now that I've got that I can use. 
The last one that I want to show you is this little stars and polygons options. That's the third one down. We have squares, circles, and then stars and polygons. There's a little slider here at the top. It says polygon on the left and then stars on the right. And really it's the same shape. It's just inverted or X like uh, uh, inside or outside. So we're going to do polygon first. And again, you just need to just change it like that. You just, I'm just dragging the mouse around and that will create my polygon from there. I can change the color just down below. Really easy to change the color. And if I want to keep the actual dimensions the exact same, I'll hold down the control key when I move this and it will lock the dimensions of it. I can't change the dimensions. Otherwise, I could stretch it. I can do all sorts of neat things to it. If you ever make a mistake, by the way, let's say I'm, you know, monkeying around and I'm like, whoops, I don't like the way that looks. Just go edit, undo, and it will just change it. And you can just back it up. You can also undo history as well, and it will change. It'll go back in time. There's a little history palette over here on the uh, right that you can, that'll open up. So from there, and again, if, if you're not happy with this, you can always just delete it and just try again. So in this case, I'll just click that little polygon again. I'll hold down the control key and I'll just make my shape there. I'll move it over. And now I can just change my color to whatever I like. Now, if I want to create a star, I click the exact same button, but instead of the polygon on the top left, I'll click the star. And from the star, same deal. Now it kind of locks in when I'm like, I can move it around. Ooh, I can move it around, but it's going to stay as a star. And then from there I can, once it's established, I can now stretch it. I can do control and make it larger or smaller, that sort of thing. And I can also change the color as well. Now, if I want to make a star with more than five points, not a problem. There's a corners button here and I can change it. And it's now because I've selected it, it's actually changing the amount here. So you can make some pretty funky designs here. I had them both selected, but you can do here with the polygon as well. You can change the corners and you can actually make it quite a bit bigger. There's also this move to the top. So if you're moving with multiple shapes, I can just bump this right to the top using these little buttons here. So now I've got that. So I can make like kind of like a awards, you know, certificate or something if I wanted to. I can make all sorts of cool funky shapes. So those are the three basic shapes. I would encourage you to just kind of monkey around with them, play around with them. There's lots of little options in here. There's like spoke ratio and rounded and randomized, that sort of thing. But I really like the corners. It's just very intuitive and very easy to use, which I really like. So you can create all sorts of cool shapes here inside of Inkscape with almost no effort whatsoever. Hope you guys found that helpful. Nice little quick tutorial.